but uh, their grandson uh, was tragically killed this past week, 19-year-old, if I understand right, in the prime of his life and a uh, motorcycle accident from what I understood. So well, let's remember all that family in our prayer. This will be a this just will be a horrible thing to try to get past. So uh, let's remember them in our prayers. And then uh, some of you probably have heard about the accident on 72 Highway up in front of Tomlinson's uh, computer and accounting up by Crossroads, uh, Life of the Crossroads Church. Uh, Trey Tomlinson, which is uh, works for the computer place up there, we've had him do a lot of projects for us. Uh, his in-laws were uh, killed in a car wreck. Uh, the lady died that on scene, I think, and then the father maybe died yesterday sometime. So uh, I want us to remember them. That's the Elam family. Let's remember them. Now, folks, if we're here this morning and in pretty decent shape, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Uh, I've been through some of these tragedies before, and uh, it's something that you never get over, something you never get past. You just learn to deal with it. And uh, that's the way these families will be. So this won't be a one-time prayer for this, uh, a lot of these situations, but it'll be something that'll be ongoing. So uh, let's try to keep all these in our prayers this morning as we pray. Do you have an unspoken request or a need you'd like to make mention of today? Mr. Barbie. Okay, let's remember all these requests, Brother Birch. Okay, let's remember this request. Anyone else? Sister Gail. AC is sick. Cash, I don't know what you call him, AC or Cash, but Vicky's little blonde-headed boy is sick, so let's remember him. Anyone else? Let's go to the Lord in prayer today, remembering our service. It's going to be a special day, but I'm looking forward to a great time in the Lord. It'll be what we put into it. And we want it to be the best it can be. Let's pray this morning. Brother Rogers, take us to the Lord in prayer. may be seated come on ushers and get our Sunday school offering I believe the Bible tells us that the name of the Lord is a strong tower strong tower and something I've always uh, admired about this verse it says the righteous run into it and are saved and a lot of times we think this is uh, we quote this scripture or hear this scripture quoted we think it's for the sinner man to run to the to the altar of salvation. But that's not what it's saying. It's saying the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are saved. That's for us. The name of the Lord is for us. And I'm thankful I know the Lord today. Well, I'm not teaching today, but Brother Rogers is. And we're looking forward to a great time this morning. Brother Rogers, come on and give us what you've got for us this morning. Give him a great hand today. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Look forward to this new year, what God has for this church, what he has for every one of our lives. And I want him to be in my life this year, don't you? Amen. I, don't, I want him to be all of my life, not part of my life, but all of my life. Begin to think through this, through the years. You know, many times people, they want to, Make you your revolution to do better, to read their Bible more, to pray more, walk with God more. That's all well and good. That's the that's the talking. But they don't need to do the talking, they need to do the walking. Anybody can the Bible tells us to not be only a doer of the word, but be a not only be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. We are to be the doer of God's word in our lives. 
No doubt that God wants to walk in our lives and God wants to be in our lives. Be committed to Christ and serving Him and living for Him, having that relationship with Him. Christ wants to walk with His people. I got many, many scriptures here I'm going to share with you today throughout the service, throughout this teaching this morning. That I want to teach this morning walking the walk. That's what we need to do in this new year is not talk the talk, but walk the walk. Many people, they say they want to make New Year's revolutions to pray more, read their Bible more, and be more, com I've heard it on the radio, to be more committed to Christ. That's all well and good, but if you don't do it, it's no good. You, you just look, you're looking at your natural flesh in a glass, and you, you're not seeing the whole picture of it if you're not walking with Christ. Here's the thing about it is, you're here this morning because you want to walk with Christ. I don't understand why that we can't have a, the pews to be full on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. You know why? It's because they ain't wanting to walk with Christ. They're not wanting to, to be obedient to Christ. They want to talk about serving Christ, but they don't want to walk the walk. That's why they're not here this morning. You got to be faithful to God. You got to be faithful to the house of God. Just like any old job, if you're not faithful, you go into work. If, if you work just a half a day, that's not going to be unfaithful. He wants you there at that time you're supposed to be there. If you're to be there at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, you're supposed to be there at that time. I always wondered why people could not be in the house of God at 10 o'clock in the morning when they can go to work at 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, Brother Keith. Amen. It's because, amen, they're not, their hearts are not in it. Their hearts are far from God. They're not, their hearts are not even in the walking and serving God and living for God. In this new year, I want to be committed to live for Christ. Paul wrote in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, it ain't in my notes this morning, but he said, Forsaken not to assemble yourselves together. The manner of some is exhorting one another so much more that you see the day approaching. We need to be in the house of God more every day. That's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me to let us go in the house of the Lord. The first walk that we it's recorded in the Bible is in the book of Genesis. I didn't give them this scripture. I began to think of this scripture that the Bible said that God created Adam in his own image. And the scripture says that it, it pleased God that he created man. And then the Bible says that God took that man and took him in the deep sleep, Adam, and he made a woman. He took the real body of a man and he made that woman to be a helpmate to her. I don't read nowhere throughout the book of Genesis through chapter 2 or chapter 3 when God created Adam and he created Eve. I don't read nowhere through the scriptures where, where Adam told Eve to stay away from the tree. I don't read no word told her to stay away from the tree. No word that I found throughout that I might have overlooked it. But I have never read a scripture where the Adam, with his responsibility, the Bible tells us, if you can't rule your own house, how can you rule the house of God? And so we, we find this, that God said the day that you take of this tree, you shall surely die. The tree of knowledge and good, the tree of, that's in the life, that's in the midst of the garden, you can partake of that tree of life, but the tree that's the knowledge and good and evil, it wasn't that man that told her to stay away from that tree. The Bible said the serpent was sustained her and told her the day that you take of this tree, you shall surely not die. He added a word to it. But we find that Christ, that God wanted a relationship with him, that he would come down and he would walk with them every day in the cool of the day, the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 3, that he would come down and he would walk with them every day in the cool of the day to walk with them. And they was hid. Why? Because they took the tree. The Bible says that Eve partook of the tree and then she gave to Adam and he did eat of the tree. That's what the book says. And so they realize that they have disobeyed what God's word said in their life and they, and they hid themselves 
And then God comes in the middle of the day and walking with them. And he says, why are you here, Becky? Because they knew that what they had done was wrong. I began to think in the book of Joshua chapter number 6, the Bible talked about the walls of Jericho. There was big walls. They was 25 foot high. They, have a, they may have a picture of the walls of, of Jericho this morning. The walls of Jericho, they was 25 foot tall, and the soldiers stood up at the top of the wall. And it also talks about it being 20 inches thick. That's a thick wall. The Scripture tells us that they was to be obedient to God's Word, to walk around the walls. They was to walk around that wall six times. They was to walk around that wall six times. They walked around. They didn't speak a word. They were silent. They, they was obedient to God's Word. They walked around that wall. And the Bible said in the seventh time, the trumpet blew, and then the Bible said they shouted and the walls came tumbling down. It's because they was obedient to God and His Word is why the walls came tumbling down. It's in our lives today that we not only be a hearer of the Word, but we be the doer of God's Word in this new year. As that many want to talk the talk, but they don't want to walk the walk. Many will say, I'm going to live for God and serve God and never be, never be committed to Him and never be having a relationship with Him. Why is that they will be, this place will be full at 11 o'clock today. It's those people that wants to talk the talk but not want to walk the walk. That's what, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. We got to be faithful to God in His house. And even though that we even got to be faithful to where we work at. Just like Brother Keith, he's, he's an owner, and Brother Chris, he's an owner where he works at. If I was to go to work for Brother Keith or Brother uh, or, or Chris today, and if I wasn't faithful to them, they wouldn't keep me long. If I'm not faithful to them, the Scripture says that we're faithful over many, a few things that God will make us ruler over many. Is it being faithful to God? If I'm not faithful to Brother Keith and the job he gives me, if he tells me to come out there and keep his yard cleaned up or do stuff around his house and I don't and I don't do my job, he's not going to keep me. That's the same way God is. And if I was working for Chris, he puts up fences and stuff, and, and if Chris told me to do a job and I didn't do my job, he wouldn't keep me. He wouldn't take he wouldn't keep me because I'm not committed to my job. I, I do say today that I do have a good boss at where I work with man he good to me because I work hard for him and and I've always worked hard for him and he knows I work hard for him and he's good to me there's times that I don't get to work he still pays me you know why he pays me because I'm faithful to paying my tithes and my offerings to God I, I can, I'm not bragging on myself this morning but I pay my tithes and offerings just like my wife was still here just like she was still living. And God has blessed me for it. Just in fact, this week, I didn't work Monday. I worked Tuesday and Wednesday. I did not work Thursday. I did not work Friday. But you know my boss paid me for that whole week. And I done took my vacations. I done took my holiday pay and everything. If you will be faithful to God and you will walk with God, God is going to... The Bible said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken his seed begging for bread. If you will be faithful to God, he's going to be faithful to you. He's going to do for you. God is good. Amen. Thursday, I didn't go to work because I had a doctor's appointment. I sat in the doctor's office for two hours. I can't, I'm just going to be honest with you, I don't have no patience to wait. I was sitting there for two hours and then they, they didn't even do anything. And so, if we will be faithful to him, I got some scriptures I want to share with you this morning. In Psalms chapter number one and verse number one says, it says, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, for he seated in the seat of the scorpion. Amen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, and he sitteth in the seat of the scorpion. Because blessed is the man that walketh with God. Blessed is the man that trusteth in God and puts his trust in him. 
in, the, in third John chapter number three, in verse number three, it says, For I rejoice greatly that when our brethren came to testify the truth that is in thee, even as that walkest in truth, as that we walk in truth, and we we will embrace the truth, God's word in our life that God is going to be in our lives. In verse number four says, I have no greater joy that my children walk in the truth. I have no greater joy, the word says, this is not my word, this is the word of God. Everything that I write down is the word of God. It's not my belief, it's what the word of God said. And so he's telling us to walk in truth, to embrace truth, to love truth. If we're going to, if we're going to be committed to Christ, we've got to love the truth of God's word, to embrace it and walk with him today. In 1 Ephesians 5 and 8 says, for, for sometimes you were in darkness, but now you're the light of the Lord, so walk you as children of the light. To walk as children of the light. But sometimes you was in darkness. Why? Because you was in the world. But now you are the children of the light. To walk you in the light. To walk in Christ. Christ lives on the inside of us because why we walk with him. If we walk with him, we're going to reign with him. To walk with him in a new life. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Many believers today, they say, well, I want to, I want to do better than what I've done, but were they after? They're not walking the way that you're walking today. I'm thankful that you're faithful to the house of God and you're walking with God and you're serving God and you're living for God today because you got your mind made up. You got your mind made up to serve God and to live for God. In the book of Genesis, chapter number 5, in verse 24, the Bible says, And Enoch walked with, walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. As that he had a walk with God. He had a testimony that he pleased God, that he walked with God. You have a testimony today with your walk with God to serve God and live for God. As that you not only want to be a hearer of the word, but you want to be a doer of the word. If you want to walk with God, you don't want to, you don't want to put it off and procrastinate and, and live it for God. I, my mother used to be in church. My mother used to shout all over the church house. But my mother's not longer in church anymore. But I still pray for my mother that she would get a relationship back with the Lord to walk with him and to serve him and to live for him. I'm praying that she'll do those things. And then 2 John chapter number 1 and verse 4 says, I rejoice greatly that I find the children walking in truth. It, it sort of goes with the other verse that I read, but it's just a little bit different. It's, I rejoice greatly that I find my children walking in truth. As that Christ wants us to walk in the truth of him, in the light of him. And Colossians 2 and verse 6 says, as therefore receive Christ Jesus, Lord, so walk you in him. How are we going to walk in him if we're not faithful to him? How are we going to be walking with him? If he's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter in the joys of the Lord. How is he going to say that if I'm not faithful to him in the house of God? As that I'm just speaking it, but I'm not letting it come out of my heart. It's what's in our heart is what's going to come out. And what's in our heart is what's going to be the heart of God that we're going to be in the house of God, to serve God and to live for God. I want to, I want to do better this year than I've done last year, and we all can do better. We all can do better in serving God and living for God. It's the heartbeat of God that we walk with him and we serve him. In Romans chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Therefore are you buried with him in baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. We should walk in the new life that Christ has given us today. 
as that not just only talking the talk, but we're walking the walk. Anybody can talk, serve God, and live for God. If you want to ask anybody in the world how to live for God, they can tell you how to live for God, can't they, Brother Keith? They'll tell you how to live for God, but they ain't never served God themselves. They never walked with God. The Bible says many of us have been baptized into Christ to be buried with him in baptism, to walk in the newness of life, walking with him to serve him and live for him, to walk the way he wants us to walk. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus which walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. You know why they're not here this morning? They're walking in the flesh. If you listen to your flesh this morning, you'd be laying in the bed. You would. But you're not walking in the flesh today. You're walking in the Spirit to not fulfill the lust of the flesh, to walk in the new life of Christ today, to serve Him and to live for Him and to reign with Him one day. Walk in the new life. In Psalms 23 and 4, David said, Yea, though that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that I feel no evil, for thy rod and thy staff comfort me. There's going to be a comfort for me if I walk with Christ. Many people are not happy today because they don't have a relationship with Christ. They're not walking with Him. They're thinking to serve Him. They're thinking to do those things, but that's not only good enough. That we got to have, we got to be a doer of God's Word in our life to hear Him say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. To be a commitment to that we get up every Sunday morning and we go to the prison. We don't do it because we love to go. We do it because we want to be committed and then as we grow in God, that commitment comes and we begin to love what we do because that love is for those inmates that's in that prison. They need the Word of God in their life. They need to walk with God. They need to start serving God and start living for God. The same God that died for them died for you. The same, the same one that died for me and you died for them. And he's no respect of person. While we was a yet sinner, Christ died for the ungodly. He died for those. He don't love them. He don't love us no more than he loves them. He loves us all the same. God's no respect of persons this morning. That we are to serve him and and to live for him and to walk with him today and reign with him. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 31, that but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. As if we'll walk with God, we will not faint. You see, when Peter was on that ship and, and he wanted to follow Jesus, Jesus said, come unto me. He said, come on. He said, bid me to come unto thee. And he began to walk on that water and then he began to sing. He began to sing. And see, that's why the scripture says that we walk by faith and not by sight. He began to sink and he said, Lord, you care not that we I'm going to perish, Lord. But it's our walk every day that we walk in and serving God and living for God every day in our life. It's that, that walk and that communication with Christ every day in our life. He wants a relationship with us just as he wanted that relationship with Adam and Eve. Every tree looked good, but the tree that was in that midst of knowledge and good and evil, it looked good to the eye. Sin looks good to the eye, but sin will take you further than you want to go. Sin will take you further than you want to go in this life, but yet it looked good to the eye. No word that I find through the scriptures that Adam told his wife to stay away from the tree. It is our responsibility as being men of the house to tell our, our wives and our, our children 
to live for God and to serve God. It's the man's responsibility. And he did not do his job and what God told him to do. He said, the day you take the tree, you shall surely die. That's what God said. The serpent said, the day you take of this tree, Eve, you will not surely die. And then she took of the tree, and then she gave to Adam. And he did eat of the tree. Because why? It looked good to the eye. It looked good to what the flesh desired, what they desired in their life. They said, in this new year, to have a walk with Christ no matter what goes our way. No matter if it's a good day or a bad day, we're still walking with him. We're still serving him, and we're still living for him no matter what. The walls of Jericho would not have fell down if they would not have come past around those walls and did what they was obeyed to do. The scripture says that Samuel told Saul, he said, obedience is better than any sacrifice that you can do. Obedience is better. And if they would not have walked around that wall that seventh time and when that wall fell down, can you imagine what that soldier felt like when he was on the top of that wall and it was 25 feet tall, that wall, and it came tumbling down what came to his mind at that time? But yet when they sound that trumpet, that wall came tumbling down because why they was obedient to God's word. They was obedient to what God said in his word that we are to obey God's word and obey God's law. The law of God is that we walk with him. The law is that we serve him and that we live for him throughout what we're going through through this life. And then we're going to hear one of these days, well done, how good and faithful servant enter in to the joys of the Lord, how good and faithful. Is that what you want to hear this morning? When you stand before him and you give an account for the deeds that you've done in your body, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Through the difficult times, through the, the disciples, when they walked with Christ and they served Christ, they went through those things to not to get them bitter with God, but to draw them closer to God. The walls of Jericho was to not fall down. It was to bring them stronger and closer to God. Because the scripture says that weapons are not carnal. They're mighty to God to pulling down the strongholds of life. If we walk with Christ today, he's going to walk with him. And if we'll reign with him, he's going to reign with us one day if we will walk with him. If we're obedient to him, we will walk with him. Many, many years ago, there was a couple that they had got married and they had went on a cruise and the man and the lady went on the cruise and, and they eat crackers every day. When they got up, they eat crackers throughout all the day. And when the last day of the cruise, they, the man said, I got some, a little money, so we're going to go eat good today. And so they went into the place where they go and they sit down and they order and they send the menus down to them and, and set them in front of them and they begin to look at the menu and the man asked the waitress, he said, where is the prices upon this menu? He said, it comes with the food. There's no prices. See, so many times we fell out short for what God wants to do in our lives. Throughout all that cruise, Brother Keith, they could have been eating good every day. But so many times we set out because we're not walking the way Christ wants us to walk in our life. If we, if we shall walk with him, we shall eat of the land. We shall have the best of the land, the of Goshen, to walk with Christ. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. It was not God's intentions for them to wander in that wilderness for 40 years. It was God's plan and God's will to bring them out that day. But they choose to not walk in that way. Jeremiah chapter number 6 and verse number 16 says, Stand you and ask, 
for the old path, the good way to walk therein, and you shall find rest for your soul. And they said, we will not walk therein. They had an opportunity to walk with Christ, but they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because it was a sin. It reminded them of a sin. There's pleasures in it for just only for a season. So if we'll walk with Christ today and rule with him, we can serve him and we can live for him. And Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet of God that he wanted people to walk with God and he never won a convert to the Lord. But he was committed and he walked with God and he served God and he lived for God. As that, that we have to make a decision in our life in this new year as that we're going to walk with the Lord. Or if we're going to do like Joshua said, for me and my house, I done made my decision. What I'm going to do is I'm going to serve God. I made my mind up that I'm going to live for God and I'm going to walk with God. No matter what I go through through this year, that I know that when I go through anything in this life that he's going to be with me. Because his rod and his staff, they're going to comfort me. Because why? We're walking with Christ today. We're walking with him. It's his plan to bring them out. But they wandered around in the wilderness. Many years ago when my sister was, they, they used to go, we used to go on trips and school went on to Tishomingo County State Park. And my sister and another girl got lost, Brother Keith. Couldn't find them. Oh, Mama, she was worried to death. All of, all of us was worried to death. Couldn't find them. Find out, you know what they was doing, Brother Keith? They was just wandering around in a circle. They was just wandering around in a circle. I remember Brother Rutland telling me many, many years ago they went hunting and they lost the direction where they was at. And he throwed down, somebody had thrown down a candy bar wrapper. And they began to walk around where that candy bar wrapper was. And they said, we just walking in a circle. We're just wandering in a circle, walking around. The scripture said in the book of Joshua, and you can read it for yourself in Joshua chapter 6, it said that none came in and none came out. That said, many times through it, Life today, people in the world, they're just wandering around in a circle, going around, going through the cycle, going through the same ritual every day. They get up and they do the same thing every day in their life. Amen. In this new year that we're living for God, as I, I didn't make no New Year revolution unto God that I'm going to pray more and read my Bible more and do those things. I just pray, God, help me be committed to you more to read my Bible more, to pray more, and to do better than I've ever did. The Bible tells me it'd be better if you not even make a vow to God than break that vow. Because you make that vow to God and you break it. That's sin. I don't want to do that. I want to be committed to Him today. And I want to walk with Him in this new year to serve Him and, and have a relationship with Him. That's what Christ longs for. That's why when he went into that garden every day, that's how he wanted that relationship with him. No doubt that he forgives us of our sin. He forgives us of things that we do in our life. But many of our lives have scars in it. I know that there's scars in my life for the mistakes that I did in my life. And maybe you have scars in your life. But that does not mean that God has not forgiven you. Amen. That brings us closer to God. To walk with God. Why? Because he brought us out of the miry clay, out of the horrible pit. And he set our feet up on a rock and established our going. That's something to give God some praise for in the house of God. As if we're walking with him today and he's rescued us from the sins of this life. And we're not no longer the servants of sin anymore. You should be thankful today that you're walking with Christ, that you've been free. Because John said, who the Son is set free, he's free indeed. You're not bound to sin anymore. You're walking with Christ today. 
And Paul said to walk with him in the new life, to walk with him according to the word of God, what he says in his word, to rejoice greatly that my, that my children to walk in truth. That's what Christ wants us to do this morning. The scripture says, he that hateth his brothers a murderer, and no murderer hath eternal life abideth in him. To say you love your brother and hate, you can't love your brother. You can't love God. You can't love your brother, you can't love God. Because if you can't love your brother whom you have seen, how can you love God who you have not seen? And so we walk with Christ and we live for Christ and we're born again. That does not mean that things are not going to come in our life and not come our way. But Christ has made a way in our life. Just like Brother Keith said, his name is the name of the Lord. is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. He's going to protect us. He's going to put a hedge about us if we walk with him. Job had a hedge about him. Why? Because he walked with Christ. He had a communication with Christ. Abraham walked with Christ. He had a communication with Christ. Abraham, the Bible said, Abraham went out, not knowing where he was going. But yet he had a walk with Christ. That's what we must do in our lives today is have a walk with Christ to communicate with him, to serve him, and to reign with him. To hear him say, well done, Thy good and faithful servant enter into the joys of the Lord. To walk with Christ today in the new life. Peter told this, he said, to Cast all our care upon him, for he careth for us. He cares for what you're going through today. But in this new year that we have, it's not just having a program and having a form of God and but having a relationship with Christ to walk with him in this new year. To walk with him in this new year to serve him. The Bible said the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine, that they would teach to themselves teachers of each year. But we are to walk with Christ this day and this hour to live for him and to serve him in this day that we're living in. Amen. God bless you. Walk with him this year. Walk serving him and being obedient to him in his word, and you'll see great results in your life. May not to be only a hearer of the word, but be a doer of God's word in our life. Amen. God bless you for being in the house of the Lord this morning. I want to share the scripture with you in the book of Genesis, chapter number 3 and verse number 8 today. He said, I heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst trees of the garden. Why did they hide themselves? Because they were naked. Why did they hide themselves? Because they knew that they were committed to sin. What did Paul say in our lives in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1? He said, therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. As that Christ wants us to walk with him today in this new life we're living in. God bless you for being in the house of the Lord this morning. I hope I said something to help you this morning. Hallelujah.